Welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Now back in the dark ages when I went to school, um, if you were big and beefy and brawny, you were singled out to be a miner, a lumberjack, a grave digger or a coalman. Um, I was a bit puny and uh, they decided that uh, probably woodwork and religious instruction would be ideal credentials for being an undertaker. I argued with the careers master that I wanted to be an engineer so he finally settled on knitting and mathematics. Well, the maths has stood me in some good stead, but I've never been able to knit a jumper. Now, back on a more serious note, I am aware from some of the feedback and questions that I've been fielding that not everybody is completely comfortable with the way in which the machine is set up and how the, how the drawings relate to the machine. And so consequently, I'm taking this time out to do some very basic mathematical stuff. Now I call it mathematical, but it's not really. Anybody that's familiar with the uh, the Descartes coordinate system really should turn off now and not be worried because there's nothing in here to interest you. This is for those people that want a very, very basic understanding of how the system, how the machine works, and this will help them with the setup of their machine and with their drawings. This guy, René Descartes, a Frenchman back in the mid 1600s, invented this system for describing numbers and mathematics on a plane. Now that's not an aeroplane, that's a flat plane. When you load a pretty picture into this machine and you import it and you send it a few instructions to do this, that and the other, and then you finally go down to the right hand corner and you program it. There's not an artist in the background that's converting your drawing into something that the machine can understand. There's a very complex set of mathematical formula and numbers that are being computed between your picture and the machine. The programs that finish up being written for the machine that you never know anything about are all based on this what they call Cartesian coordinate system. We're going to start off in the middle of the picture where there's this cross and there's a point there which is called zero zero. Now when you're at school you probably did some graphs you know what zero zero is and you will know that also if we put some arrows along here this would be something called the x-axis and that's plus. Wouldn't it be nice if everything was consistent in this world? Everybody knows how a clock works. It starts at 12 o'clock and it goes round clockwise and finishes up back at 12 o'clock. Wouldn't it have been very nice to have 0 degrees at 12 o'clock and 90 degrees at 3 o'clock and 180 degrees at 6 o'clock? No, he was a Frenchman so he decided that 3 o'clock was a good idea to put 0 degrees and we'll work backwards to 90 degrees. So just to confuse the issue the Chinese up the top here have given you a lovely little symbol to show you rotation and look we'll rotate that symbol how many degrees do we want to rotate it we want to rotate it 90 degrees so if I type 90 in there do you want to have a guess which way it's going to rotate look at the symbol there now look at the arrow yeah I thought it would fool you look this is zero degrees and this is plus 90 degrees. Okay, so now we want to get this arrow pointing in the opposite direction. And I think it should be fairly straightforward that doesn't matter whether we go clockwise or anti-clockwise, we're gonna get it into the opposite direction. So you don't need any knowledge for that. So if we put 180 in the box up there and rotate the arrow, look, we've got 180. Okay, and this is the uh, the minus x axis. And now we've got this arrow here. Now we need that to be pointing downwards. And we've got two choices to make it point downwards. We can go up to here and we can make this. You can cheat really and say, well, look, 0, 90, 180. It must be 270. So you could put 270 in there. 270. And there we go. That works. If I just undo that, control, control Z to undo that, we could equally well 
<coughs> get it pointing down by going to look here we go 0 plus 90 we could go 0 minus 90 we can put minus numbers in there if we want so we could do minus 90 same result now when you first get your machine it's a virtual certainty that you'll probably find this software comes with it and it will have these blue arrows down at the bottom corner here and also down at the bottom corner here you'll probably find this green block because there is not a drawing on your page only when you put a drawing on your page does this green block hang on to one of the corners of your drawing and we'll explain that in a minute but the first thing you've got to do is to decide where is your machine head when you switch your machine on it will naturally drift to one corner to set up something called a datum it's zero zero for the machine itself now this as you see <coughs> is a nominal datum for a machine not necessarily your machine but a machine and it is in the correct Cartesian position for working in this quadrant here the X plus and Y plus quadrant because this is zero zero and here is zero zero and look here are the two axes okay now, the chances are that your machine will actually be up at the top left hand corner here as you look at it. So what we need to do is to set these blue arrows into the same position that your machine head sets to. And we do that by going to the config menu and going to system settings. If we look back at this picture, when we move this zero zero position to the top left hand corner effectively what we're doing now we're working in the x plus and y minus quadrant we're working in this quadrant between three o'clock and six o'clock okay now to do that what we take a look here and we see look we've got something called an x axis mirror no the x axis has remained the same way a y-axis mirror well yes because we are working in a mirrored y-axis downwards not upwards so when we say OK now look what happens to the blue arrows they've now moved to this position and we're now working in this quadrant here you don't have to worry about the fact that we're working in this quadrant here now the only reason I've spoken about this is because you need to understand from the setup there just why you have had to tick that mirror box because the y-axis has been mirrored because you're now working in this quadrant and not this quadrant. The x-axis has remained positive the same. So let's go back up to the config system again and system settings and the other thing that we could play with is this laser head, head position. But if I put it over to that corner and click over here, look, it's now in this corner of our picture. There's always a chance that what could happen is your program could finish up out there in space and the machine won't be able to cut it. So without going into too much technical and mathematical detail, just accept the fact that the sensible place to leave that green dot is where your laser head is which is over at the top left hand corner. The green blob is down at the bottom left hand corner still even though you've got your machine coordinates set up at the top. But as soon as you draw any picture or put any any object on this page the first thing that's going to happen is the green blob is going to jump to the top left hand corner. Now the green blob is where your program is written from. You don't know that but the program will automatically be written from that green blob 
in coordinates away from that point. So let's just put handles around this for a minute because we've got another possible confusion coming in here with another set of zeros. If we take a look here next to the padlock we've got a little picture which basically is yet another zero picture. If we click that there's another position that we can set for reference. There are times when it's very convenient to put the reference point this is an object reference point into the middle and at the moment if we look at this circle here it's got a cross right in the middle and if we take a look up here at the X and Y coordinates if we move that to 150 and we move this to 150 as well you'll see that the center point has moved to 150 by 150 and that's very convenient because if I draw two lines now the program doesn't know that I'm going to move those lines at the moment so it's automatically assumed that the corner of the picture is up there whereas a few minutes ago it was down here but it's it's the corner of, of an encompassing rectangle now each one of these objects has got a center point it if I wanted to put these two lines crossing over the center of this here so first of all I know where that center of that circle is it happens to be at 150 150 and if I want that to go dead through the center of the circle all I've got to do is change the coordinates to that to 150 by 150 and there we go and we could do the same with this we could set that to 150 by 150 and that's a very convenient use of the center point for an element or object. Now we can also bring this screen up and we could change it to a top left hand corner. What you won't have noticed unless we look up here is that this is no longer 150 150. What's actually happened now is that center point coordinate has changed to this corner coordinate and look here it is up here it tells me I've got this little corner coordinate so if I want to move this now to 0 0 for instance and I would have put my program right in the middle right up against the uh, the most extreme point in the machine I could type 0 in there and I can type 0 in here and there we go the object has now tucked itself right onto machine 00. On the machine keyboard you'll find you've got plus and minus arrows which allow you to move this green dot around anywhere you want and you could drive it hard up to this axis and hard up to that axis and then you need to press your origin button and what that will do is exactly what we just did it will set that point there as the origin right in the corner but equally well you could drive your machine around anywhere you like if you just put a random piece of material down on the work table and you want to set this point up onto the corner of the work onto the corner of the material the material doesn't have to be in the corner the material can be anywhere and you can drive your machine and you can set a temporary origin for your work anywhere on the machine and the origin button on the machine actually stores a temporary zero zero at that point. And when you turn your machine on, the first thing it will do is run to the corner, find a zero zero position for the head, the machine itself, set its own coordinates up, and then it will run back to the last position where you set the origin. I know that when I first looked at this system it rather confused me and it took a little bit of time for me to understand exactly what was going on. Now I may not have explained it very clearly to you but I hope I've helped you rather than confused you.